Hi everyone, Alex here. Excel has been busy releasing a lot of cool functionality that you might not know about. I wanted to make a video showing some of those tips. As always, I'll have timestamps below that you can use to navigate. And without further ado, let's jump in. Number one, checkboxes. You've probably tried to insert checkboxes at some point in your life with Excel and realize that it's not as easy as it seems. Well, you no longer have to struggle because it natively is supported now uh, through the insert tab in Excel. So all you have to do is select the cell or cells where you do want to insert the checkbox. You go to insert and you click checkbox. Now you've got this uh, native clickable checkbox that's automatically inserted for you. And you can do this with multiple cells as I'll show. And it's just extremely simple, clean and concise. Keen-eyed viewers might have noticed that the formula value up here actually changes if you toggle a checkbox or not. So under the hood, this is actually really powerful because when you check something, it'll now be true and it'll be false when it's unchecked. This means that you can look at the value of the checkboxes in formulas. You can do everything in Excel that you would normally do, things like conditional formatting. So I'll show you two cool examples with checkboxes now. I'm gonna go ahead and check a few random boxes here. And then let's say I want to figure out how many of Alice's tasks are currently marked as complete just to have sort of a, a total number that she's done. Well, the way I would probably tackle this is with the count ifs formula. And the reason for that is because we have two things we wanna check. We wanna check, is it Alice? And then has she completed that task in that specific row? So if we look at the count ifs function, that's exactly what we want because it lets us specify multiple ranges um, with multiple criteria. So as the first range and criteria to check, I'm just gonna do all of column B for simplicity. And I'm gonna say, I want that value to be the string Alice, which is denoted with the quotation marks there. And then I can go to my second range. So what do I wanna do for that? Well, I wanna check if it's complete or not. So I'm gonna go to column E, that selects the entire column. And then I'm gonna check if that's true. So all I have to do is put true in capital marks. And if that's the case, we can see that Alice has two items which have been checked. And you know, if I wanna click and toggle them, you'll see that that automatically updates as well. Um, and other ones don't affect her because we're not checking for anyone but Alice. So pretty slick. As another example, let's say I wanna visualize this table with conditional formatting. So I wanna see you know, at a glance that the completed items are green, for example. Well, that's pretty easy too. All I have to do is select my table, go to conditional formatting, click on highlight cells rules, and I'm gonna use the equal to function real quick here. Cells that are equal to the value true, let's fill them with a green fill. And okay, that's good, it's a start, but I want the whole row to be green just to make it a little more visual. An easy way to tackle that is to go to conditional formatting. I'm gonna go to manage rules to get that rule that we just set. I'm gonna click on edit at the top here. And then the way to do rows is you wanna go down to use a formula to determine which cells to format. And this may, might seem a little tricky, but don't worry, it's very simple, so just bear with me. All we have to do is, starting from the top, we're gonna to say dollar sign A, sorry, dollar sign E, two. The dollar sign E means keep the E column static, and the two just means let's go to row two. And then it's smart enough that Excel is gonna jump down and increase the number here because we didn't put another dollar sign in front of it. If we put a dollar sign in front of the two, that would hold it as a constant row and column, but we only want the column to be constant and the rows to move. And Excel knows that if you do a dollar sign E, for example, here, it wants you to highlight the whole row two as green. So all we wanna do is that equals true, press okay. So there you can see the formula, hit apply, and boom. Now all of the rows in our table are gonna be highlighted fully green if we select, you know, anyone's done their work properly. Seems a little bit confusing with the formula, but it's not too confusing if you think about it for a little bit. Number two, contrast. So this is actually a very useful feature, even though it might not seem like it on the surface, and it'll help you massively with those giant spreadsheets with a ton of colors that are really hard to read. So Excel recently introduced a feature where it's actually smart enough to tell you what color types are the best given whatever color the background is at that time. For example, let's you know do this first with nothing. If I click on the text color icon here and then I select the high contrast tab, you'll see the colors drop down to only certain colors. And those ones are the best colors on a white background. The cool thing about this feature is that if we change the background color to blue, for example, just choose a blue here and then below it, I change one to red and I change this one to yellow. Now, if we go back to the text and we go back to the color palette, we click on high contrast, all of a sudden the colors are a lot different than they were before. And that's because Excel is smart enough to detect, okay, there's blue in that background there. So you probably need a pretty dark color to make it legible. Whereas if we look at red on the background, now we click on high contrast only, black is probably your best bet there. If we click on yellow, you've got a whole swath of colors that are actually quite legible because it's obviously a lighter color. Really cool feature, will help you a lot with your big complex spreadsheets, making them easily readable. Number three. 
focus cell. So this feature is great for when you actually need to drive an Excel meeting and show people, you know, a big complex database. So for this, go to view at the top here and then click on focus cell. It'll draw a column and row in a specific color wherever you've selected. So it makes it really easy to jump around and have people follow whatever you're doing if you're presenting in a meeting, for example. The colors are customizable as well, so you can select you know, whatever color you'd want. If you want red, I can do that. It's got darker ones as well. And the cool thing is it'll also automatically highlight the row and column if you control F. So let's control F for Alice, and we'll do find all, find next, and it'll move as you do control F. Number four, group by. So the group by function is super useful, but the way you should think about it is that instead of just spitting out a specific value in a cell, the group by function will actually return an entire table. So let's go step by step and kind of explain how it works. So it looks like there's quite a few parameters in here, but you really only need to worry about three. And the way to think about it is what is the first thing you want to group? What's the value that you want it grouped by? And then what do you want to do with that? At a super high level, let's say we want to see all the different types of categories here. Let's say we're running a grocery store. I want to see how many sales all of the fruits had, all of the vegetables had, etc. So as the first category, I know that I want to group by category. So I'm going to just select the entire A column there and then value. So what's the thing that I'm interested in? Is it the quantity? Is it the price? Is it the sales in this case? Well, let's look at the sales. So I'm going to use that as my second parameter for values. And then the last one, which maybe seems a bit confusing, is this function one. All you need to know about this is that you can do different things like sum, average, etc., on what you want to do with those sales. But to keep things simple, let's do sum. What this is going to do is it's going to group all of the things here. It's going to look at the value in the E column and then sum them up and report it. So if I hit enter, it should spit out a table here instead of just a single cell. And you can see it did exactly what we wanted. It grouped all of the dairies together. Four plus three is $7 worth of sales. We can validate that really quick. The fruits, you know, 10 plus 960, it's all good. It even spits out a little total. And let's say just for, you know, an example purpose, I wanted instead uh, this to be the average. Uh, we can select average here, press enter, and it automatically changes all the average. So pretty cool, pretty nifty functionality there, um, and not as confusing as it seems on the surface. Number five pivot by. So if you've ever used pivot tables, you're probably familiar with this, but the use case for pivot by is when you want something a little bit simpler than a full out pivot table. And let's walk through what exactly it can do if we have a collection of data in a table like this. So I've got a bunch of fruits, vegetables, dairy, snacks across different years and items. Let's say I'm specifically interested in almost a summary, you know, year over year of how the different items are doing. So let's look at the pivot by function. You'll see there's four main parameters that we have to care about. The very first one, row fields, you can think of as the first item that you want as your first dimension. So in this case, I said that I'm interested in the items themselves. So I'm going to select items, just the whole C row. The second parameter here is what's the second dimension that I care about. So I actually wanted to see this, you know, split up by years. So I'm going to select the years column. And then values are just what you want to be in your actual table that's going to get spit out. So what's the particular value? Do I care about what the quantity of things were that were sold year over year? Do I care about the specific price? I think sales is the most interesting. So again, another column, all of these three parameters have the same dimension. So that's an easy way you can think about, you know, how do I match them? Just make sure they're all either the entire rows or they're all the same dimensions. Function, the exact same as group by, you can do different things here with sums or averages. I'm just going to do sum for this example, and that should spit out a table. So if I press enter, you're going to see we got exactly what we were hoping for. So on the left here, my first dimension is all the items. So that's the column C in the first one. And then the column A, the years, that's my second dimension, which is split across over the top here and sum just means that we've summed up everything uh, that was sold and if we had you know multiple apple rows for example we'd see them summed up properly here as well now you will notice that milk and and below look a little bit off that's just because my formatting didn't have this as an accounting number so if i go to the top here and click the dollar sign everything should be back to kosher number six translate and detect language this functionality is super useful if you have for example a form that has a bunch of different languages in the responses and you don't actually know which language is which, uh, but you want to translate everything back to say English. So the way that I would start is you type equal sign and then uh, tab on the translate function. I'm going to select cell A2 there as my first example. And typically you might need to know what the source language is in the past, but now with the new detect language function, if I select the same cell again, close the brackets, 
close the brackets once again. Now it'll actually detect whatever language is in this column and translate it automatically. So it'll say busy for a second and now it's automatically translated everything uh, to English for me. Number seven, Lambda. Lambda is an interesting new function that they've introduced that requires you to think a little bit like a programmer. Instead of needing to do VBA or, or any advanced kind of things there, they have built-in ways for you to create your very own functions with their own names and their own calculations. Let's start off really simple with, with an example where if you type in lambda and you press tab, the first thing you have to do with lambda is define what kind of calculation you want to do. And you can use your own symbols for this. So let's say I just want to add together the you know, length and the width here. Well, first I'm going to have a variable A and a variable B. And what do I want to do with those two variables? I just want to add them together. So that dictates what our own custom function is. Now it's a bit confusing in this syntax, but you actually have to call the function too after you've used it. So let's just test and see if it works. I'm going to put in the numbers one and five and see is it properly using these symbols we made to add one and five together and uh, it, it shows six so it looks like it's pretty good so instead of hard-coded numbers now let's put in references to the cells a2 and b2 go ahead and hit enter and we can see it successfully used our little self-defined formula there to properly add together those values but I don't really like the way that this formula is set up here, you know, with the two brackets side by side. It's a bit confusing for someone not familiar with this. So how do we make this better for someone who's, you know, not familiar, but still wants to maybe use this function? Well, you can actually use something called the name manager. If we go to formulas and then we click on name manager here, this will allow us to actually set up a new name. So if I click new name, I'm going to call it rectangle rectangle area. And the thing that I'm going to do, you can add a comment if you want. And refers to is where the magic happens. So I would like to not have it refer to anything but directly put in the formula here, I'm going to do length, width as my two symbols and then just multiply them together. So now I've got my own defined lambda function, which is going to multiply the length and the width of something together, and it's going to have the name rectangle area. So if I press OK, now I've added it to my name manager, I can close this. And instead of having this kind of ugly format here, I can tell someone, hey, in my workbook, I've added this new function called rectangle area. And all you have to do is put in a length and a width and it'll properly compute it. You could imagine if you had a much more complicated function, you could do all the work to add it behind the scenes and then give it to your team and they can just use your function directly with a nice name, you know, with its own description as well, and then have everything work under the hood. So very powerful, very customizable. And there's the Lambda function. Number eight, scan. So now that we've learned a little bit about Lambda functions, which are just customizable functions that you can define yourself, there's also a new function that was recently added called scan. And what scan does is it will scan an array of values and apply whatever Lambda function you define to each value and then it'll return the value at each point in that array. So instead of returning just a single value, scan will actually return an array the same size as the input. So let's say we want to create a running total, which can sometimes be a little bit tricky in Excel before this function existed. So I have this simple count column on the left, just numbers one through 11. I'm going to first, sorry, as, a, as an initial value, we're going to just have zero. That's if you want it to start from some other number or something else. But for the array itself, I want that to be A2 through A12. And then the function is where you input a lambda function. So just like we talked about before, lambda, I'm going to just do a simple addition. So adding the count to the previous number. So a and b is a plus b, close off my brackets there. Now if I press enter, it should apply that a plus b lambda function to every value in this array. And what that'll generate is kind of a running total. So you know, one maps to one, one plus two maps to three, one plus two plus three maps to six, et cetera, et cetera. So we've got a running total just with a few little lines up top. Uh, very useful, very functional. And there we have it. Some interesting tips and functionality from Excel that you might not have known. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking or subscribing. It helps a lot. And as always, see you on the next one.